Well, hi everyone, and welcome to the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers Virtual College Fair. We are so excited to have y'all participating in this event and have some really fantastic schools here with us today. So my name is Karis and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have just a few housekeeping items. So you will notice that your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists can't see or hear you. You can, however, use the Q&A button on your screen to type any questions to our presenters at any time. So this is the last um, session of the night happening, um, but all of these presentations are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Virginia. So I would now like to turn it over to our first presenter in college, which will be Franklin and Marshall College. Thank you so much. Give me one second to share my screen. All right. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, thank you guys so much for joining. Let me really quickly. There we go. All right. My name is Hannah Frowinger, and I am the Associate Director for Regional Admission for Franklin and Marshall College, which is located in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, I am regionally based, in, though, in uh, Alexandria, Virginia. Um, so I'm just going to do a very brief overview of Franklin and Marshall College. And if you have any questions at all, be happy to answer them um, in the Q&A, or I will also be happy to give you my email um, once I'm finished. So Franklin and Marshall College. So we are a global student body. We are located, like I said, in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, about 2,300 students. So your typical small liberal arts college. Uh, we have 42 states represented plus DC, 46 countries. We're about 17% international, 23% of us uh, students are first generation and 25% um, students of color on our campus. So we really um, take pride in our very diverse student body on our campus um, with those 2,300 students um, in total. Um, one thing we do like to highlight is our um, wonderful academics that we have at Franklin and Marshall, as well as the class sizes. So average class size here is about 17. Um, some of your larger classes are just going to be those ones that everyone has to take being liberal arts. You will take classes uh, very similar to high school, you know, your maths, histories, social sciences, things of that nature. Um, but those will typically cap out about 30 to 40 students. Uh, and then once you jump into more of your major specific classes, those can get even smaller um, at about um, 10 to 15 students. Um, we have a nine to one student to faculty ratio. Our students have great relationships with our professors on campus. You will most likely have them for multiple different classes once you jump into your major specific ones. Um, so they really pride themselves on building those student to um, professor relationships throughout your four years. Um, we have 62 fields of studies and majors and minors that you can choose from. Um, so like as we are liberal arts, so you're not coming in day one focusing on just your major. You do have some time to figure out what you wanna major in um, and have your degree in. And your first two years, like I said, very general education courses and you do not have to declare your major until the end of your sophomore year. Uh, and then it's a discussion-based curriculum. Some of those small class sizes are very heavily discussion-based, which is really great. Um, we are a very collaborative community. So if you ever do some research about Franklin and Marshall, one thing you might find some in interesting information about is our um, college houses. So freshmen are required to live on campus their freshman year. And we have a really great housing community. You're kind of thrust into a strong community right when you come and step your foot onto campus. Um, think of the college houses very similar to Harry Potter and Hogwarts and the different houses that they have. Um, when you select your first year experience course, from that selection, you are placed in a certain college house. All of them are listed on our website. Uh, but what's great about these houses is that there's a live-in dean and a faculty member. So you have great academic support, emotional support when you first come to college. Um, these houses put on different social events. They maintain their own budget. Uh, and each house kind of does different competitions with one another. Um, and even though you're only living with, the, with them for your freshman year, you are still connected with them all four years. And you actually do graduate with the house that you were placed in your freshman year. Um, so it's a really great community that you are already a part of right when you start day one. Uh, we have over a hundred um, clubs and organizations on campus. Every student is involved at at least three to four clubs. Um, we have 27 um, varsity teams or division three um, school with division one in um, wrestling. 
Uh, and then we have a lot of great um, club and intramural sports that you can participate in as well. We do have Greek life. Um, we're not a go Greek or go home kind of school, but it's a great community if that's something that you're interested in getting involved with. Um, one other thing we really like to highlight is OSPAGOD, which is our Office of Student and Postgraduate Development. So it's just really hands-on guidance and support, um, not just for the pre-health, pre-law, and pre-STEM majors, but for all majors as well. Um, you can get in very early, not just your senior year, and works with um, internships, research opportunities, um, finding jobs after you graduate, working with you pretty much throughout your four years to prepare you for graduation, networking opportunities with alumni, um, and it really helps, especially with our um, engagement rate uh, across all years being about 85%. So it's a really um, great office on our campus that we like to um, talk about. Um, just some quick admissions facts is you, if you're a senior starting the application process, um, we are on the Common App or Coalition App. Either one's totally fine with us. We don't prefer one over the other. We are ACT, SAT optional. We've been like that for about 20 years. It is not new because of COVID. It's been like that for a while. Um, and then our deadlines are there. We do have ED1 and ED2 with being November 15th and January 15th, and then regular um, being January 15th as well. Uh, and then interviews are recommended, re recommended, but they are not required. Um, we are offering virtual interviews, so a little bit easier for you to access, um, but you can also check to see if there's any interviews going on in your area in person as well. And then finally, just some financial aid information. We do meet 100% of institutionally determined needs so by completing the FAFSA and submitting that. Um, we award about $60 million each year in grant aid. And more than 60% uh, of our students receive some form of need-based aid and the average aid package is about 48,000. But if you have any questions about the financial aid um, with FNM, you could definitely contact them or contact me. I'll be happy to kind of walk you through that process. Um, so that is a, a quick overview for me and I will be sure to drop uh, my contact information in the chat. So if you have any questions at all, definitely do not hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much. All right, sounds good. I will keep the things going and turn it over to our next institution, which is WVU Potomac State College. Hi, right, good evening, everyone. My name is Cassie Weiss and I'm an admissions counselor for WVU Potomac State College. And thank you guys for joining us. Um, I wanna welcome you into our lovely little campus in Kaiser, West Virginia. Um, so we're up in the Eastern Panhandle nestled in a small town. Um, our students live right in the heart of campus, right off the quad here in the middle. Uh, we have a really family-like atmosphere on our campus, so everybody kind of knows everybody, and you have a support system through your entire time with us and even afterwards. Um, so let me go ahead and tell you a little bit more about who we are. So as you can probably tell from our name, we are part of WVU, so we are one of the West Virginia University regional campuses. Um, so on our campus, you get the big time university curriculum, same class as you would in Morgantown, just delivered in a much smaller setting. Um, so our average class size is only about 20 students. Um, we do have a 20 to one student to faculty ratio. Um, the max you're really gonna see in a classroom for us is about 35 students. Uh, we are a lot closer than people believe. Uh, we're about three hour drive from DC, Northern Virginia, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or Baltimore, Maryland. Um, we are considered one of the most affordable four-year institutions in the country. We have about 1,300 total students. Uh, we do compete on the junior college or JUCO level with our athletic teams, and we do have on-campus housing available. Two of the best things about us, it is free to apply, and we are completely test optional, so no test scores are required for admission. We do have a couple of different options when it comes to degree programs. We offer 60 different majors. Um, so we do have a couple of different two-year programs. So we have the two-year degree where you can graduate and start your career. And those are your associates of applied sciences programs. We also have two-year transfer degrees or your two plus two degrees where you get your associates of arts. Um, and then you go on to finish your bachelor's degree. You can do that at one of the other uh, WVU campuses or another campus of your choosing. We do also have two fully online uh, associates programs in business administration and general studies. And then we do have six four-year bachelor's degree programs that you can complete all four years with us right here in Kaiser, including a nursing BSN, criminal justice, and sustainable ag entrepreneurship. So we all know that college can be a little hard and we wanna make sure that you have plenty of resources available for you. You can find everything you pretty much need in the Mary of Shipper Library. So we do have professional librarians in there that are helpful, helpful with navigating the research process and citation process. Um, you have access to all of the online databases available for a WVU student. So hundreds of thousands of books, journals, magazines, 
whatever you need for a paper project, you're gonna be able to find it. You can access it right from your own computer, no matter where you are, uh, even if you're not on campus. Uh, you also get a free download of Microsoft Office Suite and antivirus software. But some important things in our library, in addition to those resources, is the Academic Success Center. Uh, we offer free tutoring here to all of our students. All you have to do is sign up for an appointment. We have professional tutors available in math, science, and English. And we do also have a writing center available to help you with your research papers. Um, and those are available different hours throughout the week as well. So I mentioned earlier that we are really affordable. Um, so for our out-of-state students, you're looking at $11,800 just about for your tuition for a full year. Housing runs about $9,000 a year. So in total, you're just under $21,000. Um, for our Virginia students that are from Frederick County or the city of Winchester, you actually qualify for our metro rate. So you do save about $4,000 a year. Um, so you're looking at just over $16,500 for the whole year. We do also have a lot of options for you as far as financial aid to help cover those costs. Um, we do have two scholarship programs. There are no scholarship applications necessary. So once you're admitted, you're automatically considered for these. Um, we have the GoPro scholarship with she looks strictly at just your GPA. And then we also have another merit-based program called the Scholarships of Distinction, which is the chart that's on the right-hand side of the screen. We use your GPA and your test scores. Again, we are test optional for admission. We only use test scores for class placements and for the Scholarship of Distinction program. Um, and we use super scoring. So if you take that test multiple times and you get uh, better subscores on different tests, we'll combine those together to get you the highest scholarship amount that we can. So we do also have a lot of different housing options on campus. We have five different residence halls. We have suite style living. We also have single rooms and your traditional double room style living. Uh, all of our residence halls are air conditioned. They all have study lounges. They all have cable and Wi-Fi, laundry facilities. They all have, um, as well as study lounges available to all of our students. Some of them even have their own fitness centers. Um, so they all have their own merit. It just depends on what kind of living you prefer. We also have two different dining facilities that are both housed in our University Place residence hall, uh, where we offer up to 19 meals a week uh, through either the buffet style or our grab and go section in our dining facilities. We also know that college isn't just about going to class, it's also about joining a community. Uh, so there's a lot of ways for you to get out and get involved and meet new people on our campus. As I mentioned, we do have 11 intercollegiate athletic teams that compete in region 20 for JUCO, uh, for the NJCAA. We also do have over 30 student run organizations and clubs on our campus. We have a rec center uh, that has a gym, cardio equipment, weightlifting area, as well as a yoga studio. We also write down a lot of outdoor recreation equipment, um, like tents, mountain bikes, and kayaks to our students because we are surrounded by all kinds of outdoor opportunities. And we also provide intramural sports uh, for everything from cornhole to flag football to ultimate frisbee. Um, so what do you need to get admitted? A completed application, again, it is free. So you can find that at the PSC Apply page. And then we just need your high school transcript. Uh, Out-of-state students, we are required to have at least a 2.0 GPA to be admitted. Um, there are a lot of options for you to uh, visit our campus. You can find this at the PSC Visit website, or you can contact us for more information. Um, we'd love to see you come to us, see us in Kaiser. And thank you guys for joining us again. Thanks so much. I will turn it over to our next university, which is Shepherd University. Awesome. Let me get this presentation up. Perfect. Hi, everyone. My name is Jessica, and I'm an admissions counselor here at Shepherd University, home of the Rams. Thank you all so much for joining um, today's session, and I'm super excited to share with you all why you belong here at Shepherd. So to start out, if you're not sure where Shepherd is located, we are a public liberal arts institution nestled in the heart of history. So we're located right along the Potomac River near old battlefields and we're about 90 minutes from the DC metro area and within just a few short hours of those major cities like New York and Philadelphia. Shepherd's in the quarter of the Eastern Panhandle of West Virginia and it's actually in the oldest town, Shepherdstown. You really get the best of both worlds here by being in a small tight knit community but getting those big city opportunities. And our students truly are the heartbeat of Shepherd. We have just around 3,200 students total. Around 60% of our students do come to us from West Virginia, but the other 40% make up students from all 50 states as well as 31 different countries. 
And in terms of academics, we have over 100 majors to choose from here at Shepherd with various concentrations and minors to customize your plan of study to your goals. We have everything from computer science to social work. And our top three majors include nursing, business administration, and education. And we really thrive on personal attention here at Shepherd. So being able to offer a variety of programs allows you to be in small class sizes from the very beginning. Throughout your time here at Shepherd, you'll also get to apply what you learn in the books into the real world with the hands-on experience, normally in your junior or senior year, to prepare you for your career. Uh, this is done differently by different majors, but normally it's through internships at different companies, clinical rotations for nursing students, student teaching for education students, and just some sort of field experience. And a lot of times students will get job offers at the places that they internship at. And some of the support services that we offer students include free tutoring in every subject for every student. We have personal uh, and academic accommodations for housing and within the classroom. We also have an advising assistance center for students that get to, you know, if you need secondary advising or if you're thinking about switching your major um, or if you want to add a minor, the advising assistance center is very helpful to see just how your classes are going to transfer over and what your no new course plan would look like. We also have an office of career services that works with you in building your resume or cover letter, holding mock interviews, and they also hold a career fair every year to provide students with an opportunity to see what's available outside in the field. And not only is the academic side important to us, but campus life is as well. We have almost 100 or over 100 different clubs and organizations from academic clubs to sports clubs. We even have kayaking club or board game club. So you can participate in anything and be able to stay involved. Um, there's normally always something happening in downtown Shepherdstown and we have division two athletics with 13 different sports teams. So all of these different events and games really connect the campus community with the students, um, the alumni, and even the community of Shepherdstown. And we have a different residence halls on campus. We have three different housing options that are traditional suite and apartment style. We offer single and double occupancy rooms, and then all of the uh, residence halls have free laundry facilities. When students live on campus, you can also participate in a meal plan and enjoy any of the four dining options listed on our campus. Um, we also allow students to have their car on campus even during their freshman year. So when it comes to financial aid, because we are a public state institution, we try our best to keep tuition affordable for all students. And as a full-time out-of-state student coming from West or from Virginia, um, the full tuition cost for room and board will land you at about $28,500 per year. Um, and it might sound like a lot, but that's not including any scholarships or financial aid. And so coming from out-of-state, you're automatically eligible um, for some scholarships. So coming from Virginia, you already get the Metro scholarship, which is $5,500 per year, and that's just for living in Virginia. Uh, we also offer academic scholarships that can be given based on GPA and test scores and those and as well as major and athletic scholarships and all of those different scholarships can be renewable all four years. The FAFSA is opening up in just a week, so I definitely recommend filling that out because some of our scholarships do require the FAFSA to be filled out, but it's not required for admission into the university. So what is needed to apply? Well, our main requirement right now are high school transcripts. The personal statement is strongly recommended. Um, we are test optional for next fall as well as next spring, um, but we highly recommend it just for some scholarships um, and to get placed into your English and math courses. Um, but definitely personal statement and high school transcripts and then letters of recommendations are recommended as well. So what's next? Well, now you need to come see Shepherd for yourself. We have campus tours that are held daily at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. And then we're also holding three different open houses this fall, two in October and one in November. Um, and those open houses are where you can learn more about your major of interest and meet with a faculty member in that department, as well as getting a tour of campus. You can sign up for both of those different events um, on our website. So if you have any questions, we are here to help. You can text us at that number there. Um, we're open during business hours, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30. You can also give us a call or email us at that number uh, or email, email us at that email, um, but don't hesitate to reach out. We're more than happy to help you and help you find your home here at Shepherd. So thank you so much for listening to me today. 
All right, and as a reminder, if you all do have any questions for our, any of our panelists, be sure that you're dropping those in the Q&A function and they will get to them as soon as possible. But without further ado, I will turn it over to Sutton Hall University. Thank you. Great, so thanks everyone for joining us today. My name is Jenna DeCembrino, and I'm an Assistant Director of Admissions here at Seton Hall University. Seton Hall is located in South Orange, New Jersey, which is just a half hour outside of New York City. And Seton Hall is home to around 6,200 undergraduate students. Our students come from all 50 states, as well as 70 different countries. Our students can choose from over 90 majors and programs, and these programs fall within 10 schools and colleges. Some of our most well-known colleges are our School of Health and Medical Sciences, which offers multiple dual degree programs, some of which include dual degree programs for physical therapy, occupational therapy, physician assistantship, or joint MD program. We also have our Stillman School of Business, which is ranked one of the best undergraduate business programs in the nation and has unique majors such as sports management, entrepreneurship, and fintech. We also have our College of Communication and the Arts, which offers a lot of different experiential learning opportunities given that we are right outside of New York City. And lastly, another popular school is our School of Diplomacy and International Relations, which has a unique and special relationship with the UN. No matter which major you choose here at Seton Hall University, we will be sure to help set you up with internship opportunities. Having our students intern is extremely important to us, so much so that we rank fourth in the nation for providing internships to students. Um, our students' academics paired with their internship experiences help them have a 92% employment rate six months post-graduation, as well as 50% higher mid-career earnings. As you'll see on the screen, some of our students have interned at places such as Goldman Sachs, J&J, the NBA, uh, Pfizer, uh, NFL, Yankees, The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, uh, The Wall Street Journal, uh, and so many more places. In terms of what's new on our campus, our Interprofessional Health Sciences campus just introduced a new major. This will allow students to get a Bachelor's of Science in Interprofessional Health Sciences, and they can choose between one of four concentrations, either Community Health Wellness, Exercise Science, pharmaceutical business, or health administration and management. Also new on our campus is our Buccino Leadership Institute. This was originally housed in our Stillman School of Business, but has since been spread across all schools and colleges within Seton Hall. This is due to the fact that the program has been ranked as the number one leadership program in the nation for the past five years. In terms of student life on our campus, we have over 150 clubs and organizations. We have 14 NCAA Division I sports teams, and we have over 25 club and intramural sports teams. We also have 22 Greek organizations. And to mention again, we are only 14 miles outside of New York City, so this offers endless entertainment. In terms of applying to Seton Hall, we have four different application deadlines. The first two are considered early action, meaning that they are non-binding. So those will fall at November 15th and no, or December 15th. Then we have regular decision deadlines at February 1st and March 1st. We highly suggest that you submit your FAFSA by November 1st. That way you are considered for need-based aid, not only from the federal and state government, but also Seton Hall University. And we also suggest that you submit applications for special scholarships by January 15th. Um, something also important to note as it comes to the admissions process is that we are test optional all the way through fall of 2026. And the only program excluded from that policy is our joint MD program. 
So that was just a brief overview of Seton Hall University. If you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out to me at jenna.desembrino at shu.edu or visit our website at shu.edu backslash admissions where you can find out a lot more about the programs and even schedule a campus tour. Thank you. Thanks. And without further ado, I will turn it over to our final institution. And then after their presentation, we will have time for a brief Q&A. Um, so now you'll get to hear from Elizabeth Town College. All right, hello everyone. So my name is Monica Venturella. I'm one of our assistant directors of admissions here at E-Town. I'm gonna go over all about how to become a Blue Jay. Uh, so just some background on our college. We are a small private liberal arts college located near Hershey, PA. Um, so from Baltimore, probably about like an hour and a half away, a um, little bit further from DC. So on our campus, we do have around 1,800 students here, um, mostly undergrads. We also offer some graduate programs as you guys may see on the slide here. But I do like to give you guys an overview of all of our different schools that we offer. So we break it up into schools. Honestly, it's easier on us. Um, and the fact that we can break it up into different schools, a little bit easier to kind of manage. But as you can see, lots of majors here. Um, ones I do want to highlight are the health sciences. The health sciences and also STEM and engineering fields are really big for us. Um, more unique majors that we offer um, are Japanese as well as music therapy and occupational therapy. I always recommend to students that this is a large list. I do not recommend that you jump on and try and see which um, major that we offer from this list. Definitely check it out on our website. Next, I want to talk about signature learning. So part of our program that makes us really unique is the fact that we offer signature learning experiences. And these are guaranteed for every single student at E-Town. So things like research, internships, study abroad, as well as community-based learning, they are all things that we are going to guarantee you guys will do during your time here at E-Town. Every student is guaranteed to complete at least two of them. Most students, honestly, will complete more throughout their entire four years. And they are built into your program. So you're not worried about like, my gosh, I have to figure out an internship, when do I fit it in? It's all gonna be built into your program for you. But of course, you know, we offer different things that you can do around campus. So we have 24 different Division, division Three um, varsity athletic teams, as well as over 76 different clubs and organizations. You can definitely be a part of any of these. So whether you are a student athlete who's a chemistry major, who also wants to get involved in student government and music, you can. We really allow our students to pick and choose and make what they want out of their entire A-Town experience. So next, I wanna briefly talk about the application process. So our application process is pretty easy. So step one is to, of course, apply. So we are, all, we are on the Common application and we also offer a free application ourselves. I always recommend the Common app just because it tends to be easier on our students. So once the application is in, we do need your official high school transcript, at least one recommendation letter. This can be from a coach, a teacher, any uh, mentor that you have in your life or your school guidance counselor. And I also recommend uh, that you fill out the writing sample as well. And that is in the form of the common application essay, as well as two supplemental questions that we ask, which are why E-Town and why your major. Step two is to hear back from us. So we're on the rolling basis. So typically, once you get everything in, you're gonna hear back from us within about two to three weeks. So during that time, definitely ask questions, attend events, learn more about E-Town. That time's pretty short, um, but we do try and get out to you. As soon as we know, we'll let you know uh, about your acceptance. Then you have to decide. <laughs> so on our um, timeline here, you have until May 1st, so you have from August 1 until May 1 to officially decide and make your deposit to become a Blue Jay. Of course, on time, I always recommend to come back and visit us again, do in-person visitations, um, we also offer virtual options for our students who are coming from further away, if you choose to do so. Next, I want to briefly talk about merit-based merit scholarships. They're all based on the fact that once you guys submit your transcript, you are eligible for these. These range from twelve dollars to $18,000. You can see a different range there. They'll really help you guys bring down the cost of tuition. We also offer other scholarships, which are listed there, as well as need-based aid. So that opens up on October 1. Total cost here is around uh, now $47,000. I will say not one student pays that cost. Most students pay between 20 and 22,000 to actually attend here per year. So definitely very affordable. We um, definitely give out lots of need-based um, aid as well as scholarships. I just want to briefly uh, mention the fact that if any student is interested in honors, occupational therapy, physician assistant, 
or music, we do have um, specialty programs that you will have to interview or audition for. And then of course, as students who are taking the AP, IB and dual enrollment courses, definitely recommend that you get um, these in, as well as making sure they come over for credit as well as a class. So we do make sure these come in uh, for AP a four or five exam, IB a five or higher, dual enrollment a C minus or better in that course. And we will take it in for both class and credit. Of course, like I mentioned before, we offer lots of visit options. We definitely recommend to come visit us. Um, cross my fingers, we will have overnight options available in the spring. Um, so highly recommend that option for a lot of our seniors. But thank you guys so, so much. Um, I will throw my contact information into the chat. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly. Thank you. Well, that concludes the presentations from all of our universities um, today. Um, but we do have a time for just a few quick questions. And so I'm gonna ask all of them to go ahead and turn their videos back on in their um, sound um, and start off with our first question that I have for our panelists, which is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Yeah, I can go ahead and answer um, first, uh, Ms. Hannah from FNM. Uh, my biggest advice would just be to um, do as much research as you can, but definitely do not be, has, don't hesitate to reach out to us for any questions that you might have. It can be an overwhelming process. And so that's our job is to, to help you through it. And so um, with the colleges that you have that you're interested in, just find the contacts who your admissions person is and definitely don't hesitate to reach out to us and we can kind of answer any questions that you might have. My biggest piece of advice would be to visit the campus. If you have the chance to actually go there and see what it's actually like, get a feel for the area because every campus is gonna be a little different depending on size, location, um, and you're gonna know what you prefer once you actually get out there and feel what it's like on the campus. So actually go see um, the places that you're interested in. I'll go next. Um, I'm Jessica from Shepherd. I'm going to kind of piggyback off of Cassie. Um, definitely visit campus, check on the campus website to see if they have any open houses or events on campus. I feel like that really helps you get a full spectrum of, um, you know, what it would be like to be on campus, meeting faculty members, actually getting to know more about the majors that you're interested in to see what the like what the angle would look like for you and if that's something that you actually would want to do and just see um, you know, campus through the different events that they have. I'll go next. Um, in terms of also visiting campus, I would highly suggest seeing if you can speak with a current student once you are on a campus. Uh, that way you can kind of get like an insider's perspective as to how their experience is going um, at, at a specific university. So that would be my piece of advice. And my piece of advice would be, especially when you're going through the application process, is to brag about yourself. Um, I know it's really hard to kind of think about everything you've done since ninth grade until senior year. Uh, definitely sit down one weekend, work through that um, in the application, and tell us everything. The more that we know about you, the better um, off you're going to be. Thanks for those responses. So my next question is, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? Um, for Franklin and Marshall, I would say the biggest thing I touched on a little bit in my presentation, what is is our um, our unique housing process and that opportunity your freshman year. Um, it's just a really great sense of community when you first come to college, a uh, great way to meet people and you kind of stay with them all throughout your four years. And so just the community that you will have within FNM is always something I like to highlight. So for WV Potomac State College, uh, one thing I'd like to highlight is that uh, we are part of WVU, so when you do choose Potomac State, you are still choosing the WVU system. You're going to get the same classes, same curriculum you would in that larger school setting, but it delivered in a much smaller setting on our campus and at a lower cost. Um, so we're still WVU, so the chance to go on and earn that WVU degree, just save yourself some money along the way and be in smaller class sizes. And one thing that I'd want students to remember about Shepherd is our location. So being right in the panhandle of West Virginia, we're right across the river from Maryland and Virginia and being just within 90 minutes to both Baltimore and DC. 
um, you have those opportunities that are right at your doorstep. So, you know, if you wanted to do an internship at an agency in DC or you wanted to do something with the government or something, um, you have those opportunities um, that are close by. But being in Shepherdstown, you have that small town feel and that tight knit community. For Seton Hall University, I would say uh, just to remember that we offer all the opportunities of a large research university, um, such as ranking fourth in the nation for providing internships. We have Division I sports teams, um, a lot of hands-on experiential learning at Seton Hall, um, but also that we're small in the sense that uh, your average class size is 21. Uh, you're on a name-to-name -name level with each professor. Um, so just remembering that you kind of get the best of both worlds at Seton Hall University. And for Elizabethtown College, um, I always say the people are definitely um, what drew me to E-Town and also drew me back and now as a staff member, um, just because the people are very, very nice and they everyone's supporting you throughout every kind of step of your entire college career and even post-college career. All right, and I've got one final question for you all. What is one myth that you would like to debunk on the college admissions process? Um, I would say uh, one thing I'd like to debunk is that your GPA is means everything. I think a lot of colleges like to, we always like to say we like to take a holistic view of your application. And so don't feel like you have to have the highest GPA possible or you won't be admitted. You know, we do look at all aspects, test scores if they're submitted, um, recommendations, essays, all those pieces. So we do take a very holistic approach. So don't feel like your GPA is going to make or break um, getting admitted. I would say one thing to debunk about the college admissions process is that you have to know your major right away as you're coming into college. It's okay to make that decision after you kind of get into some classes uh, or to change your major after you have kind of tried something new and decide that you have a new interest. It's okay to not know what it is and it's okay to change it in the middle of your college. Oh, this is a hard one. Um, I would say that a myth about the college admissions process is um, that you don't have to be on every single club and every single, you don't have to participate in everything for us to consider you. Um, I feel like just being passionate with what you want and you, um, you know, submit everything that you need and providing us with an essay, letting us know why you want to come to Shepherd. Everything that you participate in is nice, but it's not going to make or break your chance to get in. Uh, the myth I'd like to touch on is that you should ask for a recommendation only from a teacher who gave you an A. Um, sometimes, or all the time, we do like to see that uh, maybe you struggled with a class in the beginning, but uh, that you've worked uh, through those struggles to uh, achieve um, great results in the end. Um, so don't just be tied to those classes that you got A's in when looking for a teacher recommendation. And I would um, kind of piggyback off of what Hannah mentioned. Um, it's the fact that SATs and ACTs are not the end all be all for the application process. Uh, I know a lot of our schools are going to test optional or they have um, optional um, ways you can go. So definitely don't put all your eggs in one basket as far as SAT and ACT. Um, we definitely are very holistic in the way that we read and we wanna see if you're the best fit for our college. Well, that wraps up um, all of our questions. So thank you all so much for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a quick five minute question survey. So we would appreciate any feedback that we can provide. This is the last schedule of the night. And so you will be able to find not only this recording, but also recordings for all the other sessions that happened at strivescan.com slash Virginia. So thank you all so much for joining us again and enjoy your night.